Hey guys, welcome to RC Video Reviews. We got a pretty cool and simple little video tonight. This is the Radio Master S Bus Trainer module. It's a cool little device. Before I get into the module, I'm going to show you the setup and how it works. And then after that's done, we'll get into the radio and I'll show you how to wire it and set up the radio, okay? But this is the layout. And I, I wanted to put this on the screen first to give you an idea of how everything kind of comes together. So on the left hand side, I've got my student radio. See, student radio. On the right hand side, I've got the master radio. So this is the master. And there are two connections we have to make. The first connection is from the master transmitter. So that's this radio, this transmitter, to the airplane, all right? So I'm using a example bind phrase of go ELRS exclamation as my receiver bind phrase in my airplane, all right? And then on the master, my transmitter has the same bind phrase. It's go ELRS exclamation. So that forms the radio link between the master and the airplane, okay? So that, that's how, when we're flying, this these commands, these outputs are getting sent to that airplane, all right? Now, the second RF link that we have to make is between the master and the student. And notice what I did here. On the student radio, I use the bind phrase train in three exclamation marks. And then I do the same thing over here on the receiver, that's the S bus trainer module, we use the same bind phrase on the receiver in the module that we use on our transmitter. So now we have a bind between the student radio and the master radio. So now what will happen is when we go to utilize the trainer function, and I'll show you how to set the trainer function up, it's real easy. But right now the master has control of the radio, so the airplane. So as I move my sticks, you can see on my monitor, I'm, I'm sending outputs from my aileron up to the airplane, okay? Then I, I can activate a, a, a switch, you know, whatever switch you want. You can use a momentary switch, a logical switch, you can do a quick take back configuration, you can do whatever you want. Um, I just have mine set up on just a switch for the demo tonight, okay? So when I click on that, then we can have, uh, we give control over to the student. So I'll click that. Trainer control. All right, so now the trainer has control. When I move my, <laughs> sorry, I didn't click it far enough. There we go. When I move the stick, now the master is no longer driving the airplane, but the student radio is. You see how the monitor now is moving when I move the student radio stick, okay? So that's, that's student control. And then if the master wants to take control back, we simply flip that switch down. Master control. And now the master has control again. And the student, they can move their stick and it won't do anything, okay? So that's the, that's the, that's the general crux of things. That's, that's how it works. So let me go ahead and, and clear some of this stuff out. And I will show you, oh, yeah, let me show you the radio configuration on this first. But I'm gonna clear some of these images off the screen. We'll clear some of this material out of here, and now we'll we'll take a look at the configurations. Okay, so the master first off, let's look at the student radio first because it's really a really simple configuration. Um, all I did is click on model, and we look at the controls. I've got four input set AETR. And it's really all you need for a student and four mixes, all right? That's it. So that that's that's the setup for the student radio. That's all they really need, okay? And um, of course, you can use they can use their own trim, so they can set up their trim how they want. It's fine. Now on the master radio, um, there's a, there's a little bit more that we have to do. So I'm going to zoom in on the screen a little bit so I can show you guys the details on what you have to do on the master. All right. One of the things that got me early on when I first did this because I've done other you know, incarnations of wireless training before was that I kept trying to turn the external RF on. Notice mine's off. Now, my radio has internal express LRS. So mine is an internal express LRS transmitter that talks to the airplane. And then the module, I'm using an express LRS receiver, which is in the module bay, which I'll show you in a minute. But notice that it is turned off. You don't turn that on. That's a key. I messed with this for a while and finally had to put out a lifeline request to Radio Master for help. Um, you don't turn on the ex external RF. Um, all you do is click on trainer and you'll see an option here for master slave master S bus module. That's the one we're looking for is the S bus module and, uh, click on that. And that's, that's what you need to enable trainer. Now, I also want to talk to you about firmware because I honestly, that I don't know when that was added. Maybe one of the edge guys will chime in and, and confirm when that option was added because it wasn't always like that. It used to have master jack, slave jack, and 
and um, one other one, I think it was aux or something. But anyway, th the one you're looking for is master S bus module. Okay. Now let's check the firmware real quick so we can see I'm using 2.10.6 Centurion. That's edge TX. Okay. So I can tell you with 2.10.6, it works. All right. So that's the trainer setup. That's it. That's all you really have to do on the trainer side. Now, let me show you my special functions that I used. Um, the first one, I use the SG switch, and I have that set to away so that when we are um, in student control, we have uh, SG switch is up. It's, it's away. So I, I, I push this switch all the way forward, and that activates student mode. And so all I did here, you, now, there's a couple of different options for trainer in terms of what you give the student. I'll cover those two real quick. So when we edit this, um, my SG switch goes up, that activates trainer mode, and I'm giving the student the axis, which means they get four controls, up, you know, the throttle, rudder, uh, elevator, and aileron, okay? That's, that's what they get control of. Now, um, that's probably sufficient for most cases. You may have a more advanced scenario where you wanna give all channels, and you can do that by changing this option to channels. Okay, so if you give them channels, now what that means is anything that they have configured on here will be passed through to your radio over the 16 channels available, okay? Now, uh, if you're just teaching a basic student how to fly and you just wanna give them the, the main controls, all you need are axis. If you wanna give them control over, say, the gyro, the landing gear, the flaps, you may wanna do channels is the pass-through. And then you can also notice, if you're doing really basic training, you might just wanna give them control of the elevator or, the, or just the ailerons and you control the rest. So you have those options here. That's what all this means. So you know, if I just wanted to allow the student to yank and bank the plane, I could give them aileron and maybe throttle, right? And that's all they could do. I would take care of the elevator, rudder, um, but they would. I could give them control of the aileron and, and throttle if I wanted. All right. But you know, for most, I think for most trainer setups, you probably just want to give them access. You know, that's that should be enough. And then when you turn that on and turn on the monitor, give them control. You can see that they'll have. Okay, so there's aileron. There, uh, that's elevator, and then here's throttle, and then there's rudder, right? So that's that's basic, good enough for most trainer setups. Okay, that's it on the radio setups, and next thing I wanna do, I'll turn the radio off. It's complaining because I have things turned on, of course. That's fine. So to turn the radio over, um, this is what it looks like in the module bay, and I really like this. It's very form-fitting. It doesn't really cost you anything in terms of space. There's no antenna protruding out of the top, so I'll probably just leave this in my radio uh, all the time, and the reason for that is because anybody that's at the field with Express LRS, all we have to do is give them my binding phrase so they can put their transmitter in Wi-Fi mode. Well, we can give them my binding phrase, and I can instantly give somebody a chance to fly one of my planes. So very, very cool. Uh, very cool functionality to be added. Um, now I took all the screws out but one. So if you saw it move, that's why it's it's not it's not because of the module. It's because I took all the screws out. So I'll take this last screw out and give you a look inside because I do want to show you the wiring. And um, let's see. I want to be careful to show you because when I was struggling with trying to figure out why it wasn't working, I tried rewiring. <laughs> I thought I had my wires wrong. So this is an RP2 style antenna. This has got the little ceramic antenna. And I've got ground on the left, red uh, second, and then signal is third, okay? So th remember, now this communication protocol from the receiver to the module is SBUS. So you can use any receiver in here that you want as long as it supplies SBUS out. So if you have other radio technologies you wanna use like D16 or Spectrum or FlySky, you can do that as long as you can supply SBUS out to that pin on the on the board that's inside the module bay. One other thing I'll point out for TX16S, use SBUS port A, and for Boxer, I think it's Boxer, you have to check the manual, um, you have to use SBUS uh, port B. So you have to change depending on, on the radio that you're using. So for TX16S though, use SBUS port A. All right, so that's the wiring diagram, yellow, red, and black on the board, and then you know you, you gotta pay attention to your diagram on, on the receiver that you use. But for an RP2, um, it's it's this is looking at the bottom of the receiver. Black goes to the left, and then red, and then signal. Okay, and then once you once you've got that done, you can.
put some heat shrink. I would recommend maybe some heat shrink or, or, you know, use some captain tape or something and tape that down. I wouldn't want that flopping around in there. That's my point. I only left it unsecured to show you guys how this works. But for, you know, operations, I'll tape that down. You know, I don't want that flopping around inside. And then, uh, of course, you put your cover back on, you know, four screws, and you're back in business. You're ready to go fly and, and use your uh, wireless trainer setup for teaching other people how to fly. So if you're an accomplished pilot, you know how to fly, and you got some skills, and somebody in your club needs to learn how to fly, now you've got an option to do it. Fairly low-cost setup. Um, these are available on the RadioMaster.com's website, and uh, I did put a link in the description. So if you'd like to pick one of these up for yourself, feel free to check that out. And uh, let me see. I'm going to bring up a browser real quick, and we will go take a look at what's going on there. So let's uh, – yeah, there it is. I'm getting pop-ups here. So there's the S-Bus Trainer module. Let me go to the uh, desktop, and we'll take a look real quick at the, uh, at the website here. All right. So, again, link in the description. Affiliate link, if you use it, that's great. I appreciate that. Uh, $9.99. Uh, nine ninety nine, and you do have to supply your own receiver. So keep in mind. Remember what I said. As long as you support S Bus, you're good to go. All right. So you can get either a micro format or a nano. Mine is a micro. You use a nano on some of the smaller radios. You know that have the external nano bay. Um, and then in terms of the uh, uh, documentation, what you need to know is really here. Uh, radio Master S Bus Trainer Module, seamless wireless connectivity between an instructor and student radio. It's compatible with any receiver that supports 5-volt S-Bus serial output, making it compatible with a, a wide, wide variety. I just want to reinforce that because I use Express LRS, and that's my ecosystem. A, a lot of people don't, though, and that's fine. You know, it's fine. If you have other options, you know, other radio technologies that you'd like to share, that's fine as long as you can output S-Bus. That's all that really matters. And um, yeah, you can get them. Uh, you can get them on the Radio Master website. They're available now. Working voltage. Uh, I, I was impressed with this. Uh, five to eight point four volts. Uh, receiver interface. So keep this in mind. Uh, output voltage is only five, so you only get five volts off the board to your receiver. And um, I think that's about it. I think that's about all you really need to know. Uh, so yeah, that's it. Radio Master. It's got some really cool little things going on. I like, we just did the GPS video the other day, and now we've got the wireless trainer module. So if you want to get out there and train people, have at it. I hope you like the content. And if you do, make sure you smash that thumbs up button, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you know new videos hit the channel. Thanks to Radio Master for sending this wireless uh, S-Bus module out for review. That's all I've got for today. Take it easy and go fly something.